definitely brings us into Holy Week. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. So last night, Sharon and I, we went over to UMass to the Fine Arts Center to see the Sean Jones Quartet. And Sean Jones was uh, talking to the audience at one point, and he said that he was having a discussion uh, with a friend of his about uh, whether life continues as a straight progression or if it cycles. And so in that uh, talk, the other person turned on their computer to find something off of Google or something like that, and he heard that little music that starts when uh, they opened up the computer. And so Sean Jones heard just those couple of notes, ordinary, you know, I don't even know what my computer sounds like. It even makes a noise when I try. I don't pay attention. But he heard those few notes, and he composed something called Cyclical Music in Honor of the Windows Operating System. <laughs> and, and he played it for us yesterday, and, and it's, it's a beautiful piece of jazz. And so things that, you know, maybe I just ignore or just pass right over, he made a beautiful piece of jazz music. And so as we come into Holy Week, some of these things are going to seem ordinary. We've all done the palms, you know, maybe some have only done it a few times, uh, but others have been doing it for decades. This church has been here for hundreds of years. We've done, you've seen the same faces next to you for maybe years or decades, and, and you know, we can get fooled that this is ordinary. But just like Sean Jones saw the extraordinary in the ordinary, I ask you in Holy Week, with Palm Sunday and Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, the Easter sunrise service in Hatfield that you're invited to share in um, at 6.15 in the morning as we watch hopefully the sun come up over the church steeple and then gather on Easter for that fact that the, the, the tomb was empty. All of these we've lived before, but don't ever think of them as ordinary. Be like Sean Jones and just see the ordinary and feel the extraordinary. Worship can pull us into that in ways that, you know, just saying is Palm Sunday or Easter, you know, on the outside, it's not the same. We, we're the living presence of Jesus. And may we feel that extraordinariness and all the ordinariness that is going to be here next week and the week after and the week after. Let us feel the extraordinariness of our worship. And so with that said, our opening hymn and candle lighting today is Red Hymnal number 155, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. <laughs>
turn to our bulletins for the call to worship. Hosanna. Hosanna in Christ. Praise be to God. Christ is with us. Christ is in our midst. Let us pray, merciful God, as we enter holy week and gather at your house of prayer. Turn our hearts again to Jerusalem, to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that united with Christ and all that they have we may one day enter in triumph the city not made by human hands, the new Jerusalem, eternal in the heavens, where with you and the Holy Spirit, Christ lives in glory forever. Amen. And at this point, I invite Susan to come forward to share in the gospel story upon Sunday. Oh, it's Susan. I thought I heard Susan. Okay. No, it's me. Okay. It's you. It's you. No, no, you're not. Good morning. Good morning. Is this on? Can you hear me? No. No. Uh, you can't hear me because this thing is wrong. Okay, now you can hear me. The reading this morning is from Matthew 21, chapters 1 through 11, page 802 in your Bible if you care to. Read along. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter of Zion, see her king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowd answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. <coughs> and as you just heard in that gospel story of Palm Sunday, the whole city was stirred. It's an exciting event. And so we'll bless the palms now, but I'd like to invite the, uh, the young people to maybe come forward, because uh, we're going to ask the young people to distribute the blessed palms and to share in that excitement. Um, uh, we're trying to recreate the idea um, that there was all this, this havoc when Jesus comes into town. It wasn't orderly. And so I'd invite you to please come forward. Hey, come on, come on. There we go, come on. Oh, Tom is too beautiful. Come on up. All right. Why don't you come right on up here? Come on up. All right, so once we bless these palms, you're going to go make sure that everybody out there has one, okay? Do we have a little, oh, we have another little, oh, we'll wait. Oh, oh, okay, all right, okay. So from your bulletins, God be with you. Let us give thanks to God most high. Let us pray. O God, who in Jesus Christ triumphantly entered Jerusalem, heralding a week of pain and sorrow, be with us now as we follow the way of the cross. In these events of defeat and victory, you have sealed the closeness of death and resurrection, of humiliation and exaltation. We thank you for these branches of palm that promised to become for us symbols of martyrdom and majesty. Bless them and bless us that their use this day may announce in our time that Christ has come and that Christ will come again. Amen. Come Christ Jesus. Okay, if you could, make sure everybody gets one, okay? There you go. 
There you go. Make sure everybody gets one. Make sure everybody gets one. There you are. Here you, want, here you go. There you go. I take that. There you go. Beautiful. There you are. Okay. Okay, guys. Go share the palm. Make sure everybody has one.
Thank you, Bell Choir. It's now our chance to uh, share our joys, our celebrations, and our concerns. And let us still offer our prayers to the nation and the people of Ukraine. Uh, let us hope that somehow peace may return to that area instead of all this senseless violence. Let us also pray for the, uh, our own nation and the reality of persistent and institutional racism that it may come to an end. I'd also like to offer prayers for the six who were murdered in yet another gun violence mass shooting, uh, the 130th, I think, so far this year in our country, uh, this time in the city of Nashville, Tennessee, at Covenant School, but these are happening almost anywhere. Uh, the names of the deceased are Evelyn Dakehouse, nine years old, Mike Hill, 61, William Kinney, nine years old, Catherine Kuntz, 60, Cynthia Peak, 61, and Haley Scruggs, nine years old. And we pray for their families and all who mourn. And we pray for those who continue to be traumatized by this endless gun violence. We pray that we may escape this senselessness. And we pray for action, not only more thoughts and more prayers. So before we uh, hit our yellow sheet, does anybody else have any other prayers that you would like to share at this time? Joys, celebrations, anything? Nothing there either? So we're all set then? Okay, let us turn to our yellow sheet and please remember that we are only saying the first names. So let us pray for Alan, Alice, Antonia and family, Art, Barbara, Bill, Bill, Bob, Bonnie, Carrie, Cheryl, Cindy, Denise, Evelyn, Frank, Grayson, Hayden, Jeff, John, John, Kathy, Martha, Mary, Michelle, Mike, Nancy, Paula, Pauline, Sandra, Cheryl, Steve, Thelma, Tim, Virginia and Richard, Wink, victims of violence anywhere in the world, those affected by natural disasters around the globe, and we pray for peace on earth. At this time, um, let us just turn inward for just a few moments in the midst of our public worship to offer those prayers to God that we need to keep just a little bit closer to the heart. So just a few moments of silence. Holy Savior, whose steadfast love offers direction and purpose to our lives, help us to be faithful in all that you ask us to do day by day, so that we may see you and reveal you through all the actions that we do individually and also as this congregation. Help us to give thanks in all circumstances. Trusting in you as we enter into this Holy Week, we are eager to participate in the continuing worship of the Church, which brings you more profoundly into our lives as we remember the last fateful days of your life, and that you never wavered in your commitment to us, even going to the cross and offering your life. May these days strengthen the trust that we place in you, and also the prayers that we now direct towards you. We ask that you hear our prayers and answer them as you alone know best. In Jesus' name, amen. And may we now share in the prayer that Jesus gave to all of us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> pieces of silver, Jesus Christ was betrayed, and sadly by one of his closest followers, one who heard Jesus, one who had seen Jesus, one who spent years with Jesus. And still today, Jesus is denied in the way that we, oftentimes his followers in this world, 
use the resources entrusted to us by God. As we enter into Holy Week and recall that Jesus gave up absolutely everything for us, may we share with his church what we can of our time, our talent, and our purse. Therefore, may our contributions be as generous as our faith expects and as our conditions in life allow. And donations will be accepted now here in person, but they will also be accepted um, by, via mail. And you can always mail in a donation, whether you're with us via Zoom or later on FCAT. However you donate, thank you very much. <laughs> O Lord, these gifts that we will now place in your sanctuary as a symbol of our love for you and for all others. This is Holy Week. There's 52 weeks out of the year, but this is Holy Week. This is the week when we remember all of those sacred events at the end of Jesus' life that were so momentous and that are not only a part of history, they live with us and among us right now because of this church and our faith. These gifts that you offer help us to come together as God's people. They help us to share the message of Jesus' selfless love to a world that needs to hear that so much because there is so much violence and hatred and prejudice out there. They need the gospel more than ever. So thank you for these gifts, and may God bless these gifts to his purpose so that we may be his presence in this church. Amen. If you would now turn to your bulletins once again in preparation for the reading of the Passion. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Let us pray together. 
eternal God, whose whisper silences the shouts of the mighty, quiet within us every voice but your own. Speak to us now through the account of the suffering and death of Jesus Christ, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may receive grace to show forth Christ's love in lives committed to your service. Amen. At this time, I'd invite all the readers uh, that Irene has so graciously called together for the reading of the Passion from Matthew's Gospel. Uh, it is chapters, all of chapters 26 and 27. It's a rather extensive reading, uh, but this is in place of the sermon. And Irene has very graciously allowed me to be Jesus. <laughs> So please, please listen to this because the story can sometimes be forgotten and so it's really important that we listen again and remember the story and this story is shared from Matthew's perspective. Jesus told the disciples, Passover starts in two days and the chosen one will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest Sapius. They planned to arrest Jesus under some pretext and execute him. But not during the festival, they agreed, or we may have a riot on our hands. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, at the house of Simon, who had leprosy, a woman approached Jesus with an alabaster jar of very expensive ointment. She poured it on his head while he reclined at the table. The disciples witnessing this were indignant. What a waste. This could have been sold at a high price, and the money given to me your people. Jesus, aware of their concern, said, Why do you upset the woman? She has done me a good deed. You'll always have poor people with you, but you won't always have me. When she poured the oil on my body, she is preparing me for burial. The truth is, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the world, she will be remembered for what she has done for me. One of the twelve, the one named Judas Iscariot, went off to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I am too sober? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment he looked for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came up to Jesus and said, Where do you want us to kill the Passover field? Jesus told them to go to a certain person in the city and say, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. I am to celebrate the Passover in your house. The disciples did as Jesus ordered and prepared the Passover supper. When it grew dark, he reclined at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, The truth is, one of you is about to betray me. They were greatly distressed and started asking him in turn. Surely it is not I, teacher. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will hand me over. The chosen one will go as the scriptures foretold, but woe to the one by whom the chosen one is betrayed. It would be better for that one never to have been born at all. Then Judas, who was betraying Jesus, said, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said it yourself. During the meal, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples. Take this and eat it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them. Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which we poured out on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. The truth is, I will not drink this fruit of the vine again until the day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Then Jesus said to them, Tonight you will all fall away because of me. For scripture says, I will strike down the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go to Galilee ahead of you. Peter responded, Though I will fall away because of you, I never will. Jesus replied, the truth is, before the cock crows tonight, you will deny me three times. Peter said, Even if I must die with you, I will never disown you. And all the disciples said the same. 
Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Stay here while I go over there and pray. Jesus took along Peter, James, and John and started to feel grief and anguish. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Please stay here and stay awake with me. Jesus went on a little further and fell prostrate in prayer. Abba, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by, but not what I want, what you want. When Jesus returned to the disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Couldn't you stay awake with me for even an hour? Be on guard and pray that you may not undergo trial. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Withdrawing a second time, she prayed, Abba, Father, if this cup cannot pass me by without my drinking it, your will be done. Once more, Jesus returned and found the disciples asleep. They could not keep their eyes open. Jesus left them again, withdrew somewhat, and prayed for a third time, saying the same words as before. Finally, Jesus returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping, still taking your rest? The hour is upon us. The chosen one is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up and let us be on our way. Look, my betrayer is here. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a great crowd with swords and clubs. They had been sent by the chief priests and elders of the people. Jesus had arranged to give them a signal. Remember, I embrace the one. Take hold of it. Jesus immediately went over to Jesus and said, So long, Rabbi, embraced him. And Jesus said to Judas, Friend, just do what you're here to do. At that moment, the crowd surrounded them, laid hands on Jesus, and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those who accompanied Jesus drew a sword and slashed at the high priest's attendant, cutting off an ear. Jesus said, Put your sword back where it belongs. Those who live by the sword will die by the sword. Don't you think I can call on my Abba God to provide over 12 legions of angels at a moment's notice? But then, how would the scriptures be fulfilled which say, It must happen this way? Am I a robber to have come armed with swords and clubs to arrest me? Every day I sat teaching the temple precincts, yet you never arrested me. All this happened in fulfillment of the writings of the prophets. Then all the disciples departed, and Jesus fled. Those who had seized Jesus led him off to Sapias, the high priest, where the religious scholars and elders had convened. Peter followed at a distance as far as the high priest's residence. Going inside, Peter sat down with the guards to await the outcome. The chief priest, with the whole Chandra were busy trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. They discovered none, despite the many false witnesses who took the stand. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man has declared, I can destroy God's sanctuary and rebuild it in three days. The high priest rose and addressed Jesus. Have you no answer? What about this testimony leveled against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest then said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether or not you are the Messiah, the firstborn of God. Jesus replied, You have said it yourself, but I tell you, soon you will see the chosen one seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. At this, the high priest tore his robes and said, Blasphemy! What further need do we have of witnesses? You yourselves have heard the blasphemy. What is your verdict? They responded, He deserves death. Then they spat at his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped Jesus, saying, Play the prophet for us, Messiah, who struck you. While this was happening, Peter was sitting in the courtyard. One of the attendants came over and said, You were with Jesus the Galilean too, weren't you? But Peter denied it in front of everyone. He said, I don't know what you're talking about. 
When Peter went out to the gate, another attendant saw him and said to those nearby, This one was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he cursed and denied it. I don't know him. A little while later, some bystanders came over to Peter and said, You certainly are one of them. Even your accent gives you away. At that, Peter began cursing and swore, I don't know the man. Just then, the rooster began to crow, and Peter remembered the prediction had made. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Peter went out and cried bitterly. At daybreak, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took formal action against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him and led him away to be handed over to Pilate the governor. When he saw that Jesus had been condemned, Jesus, Judas, who had betrayed Jesus, felt remorse. He took the 30 pieces of silver back to the chief priests and elders and said, I have sinned. I have betrayed innocent blood. What's that to us, they answered. That's your affair. So Judas flung the money into the sanctuary and left. Then he went off and hanged himself. The chief priest picked up the silver, observing, against the law to deposit this in the temple treasury sit so his blood money. After some discussion, they used the money to buy Potter's Field as a cemetery for farmers. That is why that field even today is called Blood Field. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave him for the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Then Jesus was arraigned before Pontius Pilate, the governor, who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, You say that I am. Yet when Jesus was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no reply. Pilate said to Jesus, Surely you hear how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus did not answer Pilate on a single count, much to the governor's surprise. Now on the occasion of a festival, the governor was accustomed to release one prisoner, whomever the crowd would designate. At the time, they were holding a notorious prisoner named Barbarus. So when the crowd gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you wish me to release for you? Or us, or Jesus, the so-called Messiah. Pilate knew, of course, that it was out of jealousy that they had handed Jesus over. While Pilate was still presiding on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that innocent man. I had a dream about him last night, which has been troubling me all day long. But the chief priests and the elders convinced the crowds that they should ask for Barbarus and have Jesus put to death. So when the governor asked them, which one do you wish me to release to you, they all cried, cried, Barbarous. Pilate said to them, And what am I to do with Jesus, the so-called Messiah? Crucify him! Pilate asked, Why? What crime has he committed? But they only shouted louder, Crucify him! Pilate finally realized that he was getting nowhere with this. In fact, the riot was breaking out. Pilate called for water and washed his hands in front of the crowd, declaring as he did so, I am innocent of this man's blood. The responsibility is yours. The whole crowd said in reply, Let his blood be on us and on our children. At that, Pilate released Barbarus to them. Pilate had Jesus whipped with a cat and nine tails, then hand him over to be crucified. The governor's soldiers took Jesus inside the praetorium and assembled the whole court around him. They stripped off his clothes and wrapped him in a scarlet military cloak. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they pressed it onto his head and stuck a reed in his right hand. Then they began to mock Jesus by dropping to their knees, saying, All hail, King of the Jews! They all spat at him. Afterward, they took hold of the reed and struck Jesus on the head. Finally, when they had finished mocking him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, 
and led him off to crucifixion. On their way out, they met a Syrian named Simon, whom they pressed into service to carry the cross. Upon arriving at a site called Golgotha, which means skull place, they gave Jesus a drink of wine mixed with a narcotic herb, which Jesus tasted but refused to drink. Once they had nailed Jesus to the cross, they divided his clothes among them rolling by, by rolling dice. Then they sat down and kept watch over him. Above his head, they put the charge against him in writing. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two robbers were crucified along with Jesus, one at his right hand and one at his left. People going by insulted Jesus, shaking their heads and saying, So you are the one who is going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself, why don't you? Come down off that cross if you are God's son. The religious authorities also joined in jeering. He saved others but cannot save himself? So he's the king of Israel? Let's see him come down from that cross and we believe him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now. After all, he claimed to be God's son. The robbers who had been crucified with Jesus jeered at him in the same way. At noon, the darkness fell over the whole land until about three in the afternoon. At that hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This made some of the bystanders who heard it remark, he is calling for Elijah. One of them hurried off and got a sponge. He soaked the sponge in cheap wine and sticking it on a reed, tried to make Jesus drink. The other said, leave him alone. Let's see whether Elijah comes to his rescue. Once again, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, and then he gave up his spirit. Suddenly, the curtain in front of the Holy of Holies was ripped in half from top to bottom. The earth quaked, boulders were split, tombs were opened, many bodies of holy ones who had fallen asleep were raised, after Jesus' resurrection, they came out of their tombs and entered the holiest city and appeared to men. The centurion and his cohort, who were standing guard over Jesus' body, were terror-stricken at seeing the earthquake and all that was happening and said, clearly, this was God's own. A group of women were present, looking on from a distance. They were the same women who had followed Jesus from Galilee as ministers to him. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Jebedee's children. When evening fell, a wealthy man from Arima named Joseph, who led became a disciple of Jesus, came to request the body of Jesus. Pilate issued an order for its release. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in fresh linen and laid it in his own tomb, which had been hewn at a rock. Then Joseph rolled a huge stone across the entrance of the tomb and went away. But Mary of Magdala and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees called at Pilate's residence and said, we recall that while he was still alive, the imposter made the claim, after three days I will rise again. Therefore, please issue an order to keep the tomb under surveillance until the third day. Otherwise, Jesus' disciples might go and steal his body and tell the people, Jesus has been raised from the dead. This final deception would be worse than the first. And Pilate said to them, you have a guard. Go and secure the tomb as best you can. So they went to seal the tomb and post a guard. Thank you, readers.
this time, I invite you to please stand if you are able for our reflecting hymn, Red Hymnal number 199, Crown Him with Many Crowns. <laughs> give you thanks, God of majesty and of mercy, for the beauty and the bounty of the earth and for the vision of the day when sharing by all will mean scarcity for none. We rejoice that you call the entire human family to this table of sacrifice and love. We come in remembrance and celebration of the gift of Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be the good news. Born of Mary, our sister in faith, Christ lived among us to reveal the light and life of your grace, to suffer on the cross for us, to be raised from death, and then to live in glory. We bless you, gracious God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit in the church among us. And with your daughters and sons of faith, in all times, all places, we praise you with joy by saying, Holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty, the holy universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God, Hosanna in the highest. We remember that on the night of Jesus' betrayal and desertion, that he took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
ministering to you in Christ's name, I share with you the bread. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. share with you the cup. May we now share in the prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood, who may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love, and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world, through Jesus Christ our Redeemer. Amen. I invite you to join with us now, Red Hymnal number 175, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty.
Thank you for coming out today for the beginning of Holy Week with this Palm Sunday liturgy. Uh, please remember that tomorrow is Bible study for anybody who would like to uh, join us for that. And on Thursday, you're more than welcome to please come to Hatfield to join in our combined service from Monday, Thursday, where we will have communion on the night when Jesus sat at the Last Supper. And also, please remember that you're also invited to um, add any names you'd like to have added to the Book of Remembrance there. And then on Good Friday, this church will be open uh, from 12 until 3. And then on Easter, well, we'll leave that for another time because we're still in Lent. Let us now share in the benediction and then our closing hymn. We have testified to God's mighty works in Christ. We now go out into the world to carry on what Jesus began. Have the mind of Christ who did not grasp for power. Let us reach out for full humanity and humility and the bond of our shared love. Be assured of Jesus' continuing help and blessings. His steadfast love endures forever. So let us honor the name of Jesus above all other names. Blessed is the one who comes in Christ's name. Therefore, let us now go forth to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm.